Hey, welcome to Guitar Knobs, the guitars, gear, noise, and nonsense podcast hosted today by these knobs. Jared Brandon. Tony Dudzik. Me, Todd oh. Novak, and our super special friend. Florian Schneider. Of? Millimetric Instrument. Yes, and and, and let's slow that down. Millimetric Instruments. Oh. Yes, so Florian's joining us today uh, and just to have some fun with us. Um, he is not the subject matter today. We've already covered him. If you'd like to listen to our podcast with uh, Millimetric Instruments, a.k.a. Florian Schneider, uh, go check us out on get theguitarnobs.com, and you can listen to it for free. Uh, so today, our main topic is going to be how to take a really cheap guitar and make it way better, and stick around uh, to hear which guitar that might be. So... As you guys know, I love these doing these recordings. I'm just beside myself with joy. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know what that means. Um, thank you, everyone, as usual, for your comments and uh, reaching out to us via the Facebook group uh, and email. I'm getting a lot of email, and, and uh, I really appreciate it. It's great to hear from everybody. Wherever you are at in the world, send me a note. Tell me what's up with your guitar world. I'd love to hear it. Um, and one of the knobs will uh, hit you back with any questions that you have um, as best we can. Even if it's just a, you know, I don't know, shoot the breeze or whatever. But we'd love to hear from you. We've got people call, uh, downloading from all over the world. And, and um, it's, it's great to hear what's going on in your guitar world. Uh, so let's talk about what's going on with us this week and stuff. Guys, guys. Well, so in addition to making pick guards, uh, I've got... Oh, wait. Yeah, let's set that up real quick. For anybody who doesn't know Tony, <clears throat> he's now he, you're on our uh, third show with the fourth yeah. show. No, third. 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 Yeah. So, hey, if you want to hear Tony Dudzig podcast, uh, The Pick Guardian... He's on uh, our website as well, so go listen to him for free there too. <laughs> so yeah, so just to just to reiterate, yes. I make custom pick guards, mm -hmm. and uh, so in addition to that, I've got a couple of projects that I'm putting together, waiting on one to come back from paint, and a couple of others I still have to wire up. But uh, uh, that's just one of my things that that I like to do to break away from the from the usual humdrum of of chopping up plastic. So I, I do enjoy building as well. So I've, I've got a couple of those projects in tow. But interestingly, this week, I've got, I do a lot of bound arch top guards. So for, you know, for things like, uh, like Gibson ES 355s mm, and yeah. sometimes 345s, <laughs> <laughs> but other, other types of things, jazz boxes and what have you. So I, I have, uh, I have 12 in process right now, which is an unusual wow. amount, That's and luckily I've got a buddy of mine who's uh, who's who's helping me out a lot, and uh, in helping with the sanding and the polishing and all the fun stuff. So, what yeah. does he do usually though when he's not helping you? Oh, uh, Andy is uh, is a tech for the Goo Goo Dolls. Oh, so he's off the road right now, but he's going to be back on the road I think in July. Yeah. Different, different Andy. Okay, we're we're, you know, we're checking with each other. Like, wait, is, which Andy is this? Because we know a couple Andys that are both techs, tech and, yeah. and both from Columbus, and yeah, both pretty cool dudes. Yeah, mm -hmm. good guys. They're nice fellas. Yes, they are. So, uh, what do you have in right now? Just like maybe maybe uh, let me, let me two think. or three that are interesting. Yeah, a couple that are, are really nice. Uh, there's some like I think I've got two L fives. Mm. Uh, there's a, a, a Birdland, which is probably the unsung jazz slash country slash rock guitar of all times. But the cool thing about Birdlands is, is it's, it's technically a short scale instrument. So instead of, you know, the usual, I think that one might be a, I'll have to look at that. It might be 22 and three quarter. And it, it was designed by, there are two guitarists that were studio guys Jimmy Bird and maybe Bob Garland, and they kind of combined their names and they worked with Gibson to develop that. And they wanted to, for for studio cats to be able to 
play licks faster and that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. So that's, yeah, I've got one of those and I've got a couple of ES 355s in, uh, guard nice. projects. So yeah, it's cool. I, I, I really enjoy doing those because you feel like you've really accomplished something when you finally finish up those projects. Right. Not like the crappy ones I'm giving you. No, I see, no, I see how it is. <laughs> oh, you, you, got, you got binding on it, too. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. Uh, that's always a challenge, as you probably yeah, know. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> well, I never, I never tried binding. I oh, should. Really? You should sometime. I, your yeah, your yeah. designs are pretty cool, so I think that you know if you could figure a way to route a binding channel into the into the edges, that that might. Be well, a, yeah, I'm, I'm I'm currently thinking about trying to do a, an acoustic guitar. So. Oh. Whoa. I yeah. couldn't. I couldn't <laughs> believe. Uh, I couldn't believe your pick guards weren't aluminum. Remember when I asked you that in that podcast? I mean that that really threw no, me for a loop. They're not. I know they're not. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, the, I thought the, they the, were. The, <laughs> that's the br the brush part makes it look so yeah, it's yeah. pretty good yeah. stuff going on um, thanks yeah so uh, uh, let's see Jared okay let's rewind back a one or two or five or six podcasts talk about the old Gibson uh, what <laughs> L6S I oh, so, love that guitar I love it man I got it back it's mega sparkly so sparkly <laughs> it'll blind you <laughs> And Todd, you've ridiculous. seen it, right? It's it is ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It is so awesome. Is it more sparkly than the gold guard? I mean, yes. Yeah, oh, yeah. You're going to see it tomorrow, oh, man. That's I'm right. I am. Yeah, yeah, you're going to put a pick on it. Yeah. So anyway, I got the guitar back. Really impressed. I think Liberace would wrinkle his nose as that one, too. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so I've been having a lot of trouble with getting a good harness for it of course i wanted an original harness from the 70s a pickup but harness a pickup harness yeah thank you and the switches on those are just not holding up anymore they're they're made to fit in this thin cavity it's an all maple guitar so it's really heavy duty i was getting frustrated because i thought man i can figure this out you know but these these switches are very chintzy and not very well designed to last throughout the years um, so I actually did a little looking around and sniffing around and I found a guy who can make the harnesses. Um, Ooh, and he, and he can actually, he actually builds pickups too. Really? So, yeah. I mean, I was, I was really happy. I could actually buy something from another pickup builder. That's his product. Cause, uh, it, I was going on vacation. Um, and I just didn't have time to try to learn to build a wiring heart it's pretty complex a switch is very complex yeah and it's it would it would have taken me forever to try to figure this thing out interesting it's very difficult so that is tarman, one of the weirder gibsons very weird tarman killing yeah, uh, i used to i used to have a, re, a gibson reaper so it's it oh yeah, right it's kind of the same way yeah Just, the the guy's name is tarman killing and I paid him what he wanted for this harness, which is extremely uh, reasonable. And hours later, he sent me a picture of what he built. I mean, he, he just had it built. He built it that fast. I mean, it, he must have uh, experience doing this stuff. And then I had, when I came back from vacation, popped it in. Beautiful. Just a great harness. So, uh, yeah, it's the guitar sounds fantastic. I have original bill lawrence super humbucker pickups in it because i i wanted to you know to be original as as can be it just so, sounds so you, so you painted it like a, a bad bachelor party <laughs> sounding <laughs> sounding i wanted it to be original sounding as can be i can you can paint anything sparkle right i wanted it to be original sound uh-huh and uh it's just just sounds beautiful it's a great guitar all right yeah that's that's it for that you won't you won't have me talking about that anymore not, yeah, till, we put, not till we put I, the pick guard on it i want right. i want to see it <laughs> you, you you gotta put a picture on the i room. will you got a pair of sunglasses yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh you'll like it man it is guitar knobs orange sparkle yeah it's <laughs> yep it's nice. it's something nice. i think the thing that throws me off is that the entire the headstock the neck 
the body is all one paint job. Yeah. That's the thing that throws me out. If it was just the body, then... Well, the headstock veneer is black, and it has a, a chrome Gibson emblem. Yeah, but the back of, of it, the back of oh, it. Oh, yeah, the gold. Still, I mean, uh, yeah, the back of it's also, it's all... Because I mean, you I like some sparkle. <laughs> the fretboard. You could have, you could have, and thrown a clear coat nah, on it. I wouldn't have done oh, that. Oh man, no. Nah. I'm glad you might someday. Now, now you that we need, said like, that, solid black, you know, fret markers. You know. Yeah, if you need Anyways, them, but unless you shred like me. <laughs> <laughs> I actually think I might have to put tape or something I mean, or you, fingernail you polish on the back on the top of my neck because I'm sorry, you do a, a fingerboard sparkle and you may as well put a blindfold on. I mean, how are you gonna be able to see? I mean it's crazy. Yeah, it's supposed to look. Yeah. Oh come on. You're gonna get dizzy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you have to look out I'm to so dizzy. You gotta look out to the audience and watch them admire you. Yeah. <laughs> watch them squint. Yeah. <laughs> So, Florian, what do you have going on, buddy? Um, well, uh, if uh, the, the people who follow me on Instagram probably know that I'm organizing a guitar show. Yes. It's called uh, Sonore. And you're calling, just really quickly, you're calling from? Montreal, Quebec. Yes. In Canada. In Canada. Yes. yes. <laughs> uh, here we go. And uh, yeah, so um, on Monday we had the meeting to uh, finalize the the list of the builders that will exhibit, and it's really exciting. For it's the first year, so uh, it will it will happen in December, uh, September. Yeah, um, fifteen and sixteen. Found out uh, that one of the uh, one of our first guests. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, Lincoln Guitars is going to be up there. Yep. Yep, if you yep. want to hear the Lincoln Guitar Podcast, go to theguitarnauts.com for free. I'm actually oh, going to build uh, some wide ranges <laughs> for him for some uh, guitars that he's he's making for charity. Oh, so I'm he, really he excited he sent, about that. He's sending me a picture of a guitar he's working on. It's purple. It's gonna blow. It's gonna blow your head off. <laughs> Is it the pur- it's a purple sparkle, isn't it? Uh, no, no. It's a. Uh, uh, I've seen that one though. Yeah. yeah, it's ki- it's kind of pink-ish. Yeah, uh, no, yeah, that's what I'm building for the the pink ones. Oh, uh, the uh, it's for a good it ha- cause. It has no, it has a Charlie Christian in the neck, mm-hmm. and a EGC uh, Ambaker in the bridge. I think he's doing three of those. Oh uh, yeah, maybe. Wow. Yep. He's mm-hmm. gonna yeah, he's gonna be at Sonar. And, you know, it's it's really exciting. It's a lot of job, but. It's really exciting. And cool. just just for clarification, uh, because we do have people globally, um, so that is S O N O R E Festival. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and that's going to be held in Montreal, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. And that is in when? September uh, fifteen and sixteen. Can I go? We are really trying to go to that. I want. Oh pass. yeah, you you should you should definitely yes. come. Yes, it's gonna be, it's gonna be awesome. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, so and we'll go. be able to hang out with you, so that'd be cool. Yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Uh, maybe maybe a guitar nub special. Uh, uh, sonor you know there would special. be. Live you report. Kidding? Oh yeah, heck yeah, yeah, a couple of them. Do a walk we, we, It's gonna be forty three uh, builders, so a lot of people. So awesome. it's all builders. Yeah, yeah. No shops. No. Uh, it's only we kind of try to do uh, like a design slash guitar show uh, kind of thing. So right. it's not like you regular tables with the class on on them. We build uh, we build the tables. Uh, it's gonna be lower than usual tables. Um, so it's gonna be a, a bit different than a usual guitar show. Okay, uh, which is we, fitting because your guitars are a bit different. Accessories. Yeah, but, well, we we're gonna have uh, uh, acoustic guitars, um, art shops, uh, pedals, amps, and a few uh, modular synthesizer builders. So, so I need some money then, huh? Uh, I, do I need to bring money? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, listeners, send money. <laughs> <laughs> cool, help man. Out, so, help out, anyway. you did a really fantastic poster I, I let me just say for just one second for people who aren't super familiar please go to millimetric on instagram check him check check florian's instagram out he makes really fantastic guitars he's got a such a an interesting 
approach to guitar making and design. And it extends into basically every single thing the guy's touching. Guitar stands, uh, amp cabinets that you just building. You just built an amp cabinet for uh, who's the amp maker? Uh, no, I didn't build a. I didn't build the the cab. Uh, it was Derois. Uh, it's a. It's a. It will be at Sonar too. Okay. Um, oh, I thought you a, did. I'm sorry. It's a guy who was building uh, uh, amps out of um, uh, well, close to Montreal. Okay. Um, but that said, uh, you you have a great design eye, and you made the poster for Sonor, yeah, yeah, which I, is way cool. Are you going to be making those available to people at all? Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be uh, screen printed uh, in a limited edition uh-huh. uh, for the show with the name of the builders on it. Uh-huh. Uh, so uh, we we're gonna try to to do a bit more than fifty. Yeah, and they're, and they're all gonna be numbered and signed. So that's awesome. Whoa, that's yeah. really cool. Maybe we can work something out for uh, one of the listeners, and we'll I'll I'll, I'll oh hook, yeah sure I'll, I'll hook sure. you up. Sure. Um. Okay. Cool. Uh. So you just been really busy with that. Yeah, and guitars. And, gu- and guitars. <laughs> yep. Okay. <laughs> I mean that's cool. That's busy. That's yeah. doing something for with guitars this week. What's um, up with you? Oh, thank you for asking. <laughs> yeah, what's, what's up with you, man? Good one. Uh, let's see. So recently, I I fashioned a new uh, bridge for uh, my Godin uh, oh. Fifth Avenue Kingpin uh, single P90 matte black. Super cool guitar. Made in um, Montreal. Blah, blah. Yep. Blah, <laughs> bling, bling, bloop. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I, I, for whatever reason, I can't leave anything alone. And I just said, you know what? This needs an ebony bridge. Um, which actually I'm going to end up putting a bone one in, but that never in anyways for, so for right now, the interesting thing was I didn't realize how much the bridge had been compensated and I didn't have, I don't have a third, I don't have a wound third and it was making racket. And I was like, where is this racket coming from? It's just like buzzing and bumping and jumping and stuff and not in a good way. And so I went down to um, a local guitar guru and I said, man, what's wrong with this thing? Cause I've, I've done everything I can. And he says, well, it's good. And it isn't compensated, right? You need a third, a wound third. And I said, okay, I'll try that. And then he's like, and you probably need a bone bridge in there. Yeah. And then you probably want to put a bone nut in there. <laughs> and then pretty soon I was like, holy mackerel, I've, I got to get out of here. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so I just, I, I got to go do that tonight, actually. Put it, put the new string on, see if it makes a difference. We're doing a show for the Johnny Cash tribute that I do. And nice. Yeah, so that'll be, that'll be pretty fun and, you know, got to make it gotta make it right you need a bigsby on that a fun fact uh no ni- i'm all rhythm man <laughs> the 19 uh 19 early 1960s uh sg juniors uh they come with the stop tail only mm-hmm. and the marks you know the uh intonation marks on the bridge you have to have a wound third yeah it's on interesting. That. if you don't it, you cannot it, it it will not intonate. Well, they are making replacement ones, though, for an unwound G. It's the badass. No, right? no, no. They make a stop bar that's... A stop bar that's for a... You can get a lightning bolt that's comp- compensated for an unwound. Okay. And there's some. there are some companies that are making uh, that tailpiece compensated more so. Mm-hmm. I got a 64 that's like that, and it'll look weird with a brand new nickel bridge on there. Mm. I think it would. Age it up. I could, yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. Do all those things. Anyway. I'm just I'm just sitting here like listening to Tony like a little kid. Like so you, you guys, guys know, know so much stuff. <laughs> Dang. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, look where it's gotten me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it found you at this table. Sir. Yeah, sure. Uh, so okay, let's get into what Florian missed out on in his first interview. I was just too excited to get him on. And I I didn't have this part of the show figured out so we're going to do one two one two three four on the floor yep that's all right it's the four on the floor with florian it's a lot of floor going on florian what do you have for us 
well, uh, first one would be my all-time favorite uh, pill. It's the Akai Edrush E2. Um, it's a looper, oh. and it basically um, I got I got it really uh, soon as I started uh, playing guitar, and um, it basically uh, teach me well, helped me to learn play guitar. <laughs> are, are those still available? Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. So that's the Akai Head Rush Two. Yeah, E two. Oh, yeah, E two. Yeah. Okay. And it's uh, you get a looper and two delays in in there. E two. But I, I I mostly use it for for the looper. Nice. So what what specifically about that one is is uh, are you still hanging on to that for? Is it sentimental or something or? Uh, because that was the. Yeah, the first looper I and when you learn to play on a looper, especially live, and when you're used to it, uh, the switching part uh, is really important. And other loopers, uh, the switching uh, is usually reversed, so it's kind of messing me up. I never found one that I that I like more. So uh, interesting. Uh, have you tried? And o- I, and have you tried others? Yeah, and I, yeah, and I and I have a, I have a few others. I but see. I, I usually play that one. <laughs> Where do you uh, put that in your pedal chain, by the way? Uh, last and at the moment, I usually play a lot of. Uh, well, I usually play stereo uh, amps. Well, in stereo, two amps. Uh, so I do put the looper on just one amps. It's uh, it's last in the chain. You and Brandon need to hang out a bit. <laughs> Playing stereo is awesome. <laughs> well, it's not really true stereo. It's just that um, I use one amp to do one thing and the other to do another thing. So, uh, ah, okay. well, that's not me. Okay, that's I like me. that. My stereo is always on, but it's it's not a a, a yeah. Potent my, mine, stereo. mine is it's, always on too. It's but it's very a low stereo sound. You know. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, I, I like the idea of uh, two, running two different kinds of amps yeah. or or even, and this is something I still want to do in my speakers, is is I want, uh, one kind of speaker. And so if I got a 212, I don't want two of the same speakers. Yeah. I want to try that. Anyways, sorry, this is the four on the floor, not the Todd <laughs> speaker thing. <laughs> Silly. Okay. Um, What's next? Second one would be uh, the Ground Control Audio Blodos V2. Uh, it's my friend Seb uh, who designed it and uh, built build it. Um, and it's the second version which I kind of helped to uh, to develop with him. I really tested the the, the prototype and. Uh, um, because he was searching for something on the on the on the V1, and he had he had that circuit that we tried, and uh, he added some some stuff to it, and it's really really nice sounding. It's um, a low to medium gain overdrive, and uh, you you have like two stages. You can you can foot switch the a boost, so it's uh, and it, yeah, it's really nice sounding, and it's not like uh, a tube screamer or it's a really orig- it's an original circuit that he designed uh it's really kind it does scoop your mids it doesn't boost your mids like a clown or other pedals oh. it's really like neutral like i still have have a hard time to hear when you when you put the low gain on it it's you can have a boost or just like uh unity and it's really hard to find the difference between the pedal and the and the, the sound of the amp that's awesome. I, yeah. I the, the Blood Oath looks is one of the best looking pedals out there. By the way, I think like yeah, just, he does the his, his graphic designer is graphic awesome. designer. Yeah, he does a pretty good job. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I'm I'm curious to play one of those. Uh, yeah. I'll have to. Well, I can I can have uh, Seb send you one if you want to try one. I'd love to have Seb on the show too. So uh, I, I want yeah, to work sure. that out. Um, sure. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Uh, so okay, cool. Well, that's solid. What do you got for number three? Uh, number three is a wheel, and it's a trendy. It's the Montreal Assembly Count to Five, and it's uh, it's a weird, weird, weird pedal. <laughs> Montreal it's, Assembly. Yeah, uh, it's kind of a uh, looper slash uh, slicer slash uh, crazy. It does crazy things to. Uh, there is a delay and a pitch shifter in it. Uh huh. 
So when you play a note, it will pitch the note that you played to uh, multiple or uh, octaves that you choose. And it can play it uh, backwards, forwards. Wow. Really awesome. Yeah. It, does it help uh, to be medicated if you're using this pedal? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's it's really practical because with the with my use of the looper, um, I like a lot uh, Steve Reich music, uh -huh. classical but modern classical music, and it's really a repetitive um, uh, music that has weird uh, kind of like math rock uh, yeah. that has that has weird time signature and stuff like that. So. Uh, the CT5 with the, the looper, um, you can do really, really hard to replicate, hard to play without its structure and riffs. Mm. So it's it's really a writing tool and uh, and it, it, it pushes you to play in, in other ways that you wouldn't have played if you wouldn't have the pedal. So That's also fitting with your type of guitar too. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of <laughs> something global. <laughs> nice. And um, what do you got for number four? Uh, that would be uh, the um, Caroline Guitar Company Meteor. Ah, yes. Yeah, that's uh, to me that's the best reverb on the market right now. Mm -hmm. uh, it's it's a reverb that has um, an, kind of like an overdrive in the tails, huh. so you can. It's it's really really weird, and you you have a second foot switch, where when you step on it, uh, it will make the um, the reverb go uh, into oscillation. Oh, so you, you can like make immediately into oscillation, or is it a ramp? Uh, you can control uh, how fast it will go to to uh, to oscillation. Oh. So it's so it, you can make swells. It's kind of like the um, uh, uh swell delay. Yeah. It sounds close to that, but in a reverb uh, effect. If you'd like to hear the Metaverse episode, go to <laughs> guitarnovels.com and listen to it for free. <laughs> I'm, I'm plugging all the other. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's, man, that's a solid pedal board you got there, buddy. Well, I got, I got more, but well, I know. Before, so. <laughs> yeah, we'll have, we'll have you on for, I don't know, version two next year yeah, or something sure. like that <laughs> uh cool thanks for sharing that with us I, i'm no happy problem. to get Pleasure. that up from from uh from you and we'll we'll get that out to everybody so they can check it out in greater detail on the blog and if you're not familiar with the four on the four blog you should be it's at the guitar .com. it's under the blog section and i do put them out in social and essentially what we do is we just list out everything that uh, our guests have mentioned in Four on the Floor and provide links to them as well. So you can go buy one for your own self. Not for free. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> All right. So let's see what we got here. We've got an interesting thing. This has actually been requested many times. One of the guys that mentioned this topic, one of the first ones, actually, uh, Scott Gilmore, who is... Uh, He's in South Australia. I'm going to mention the town Mount Barker. So if you're ever in Mount Barker, South Australia, give a give a a wave to, to Scott Gilmore. Uh, Scott, we appreciate your comments. This was I think we've all faced this at some point in time. I think anybody coming up in guitar at some point has a cheap guitar, and at some point they realize I want this to be better. Or maybe you get one on trade and you're like, ah, I don't want to throw it away. Or you get a sentimental guitar from somebody and you know it kind of sucks, but you want to make it better. So this is uh, this is just a, a couple ways that we might do that. So we're each going to go around and, and offer up what uh, maybe what one thing that we would do to take a... We've chosen a guitar. The one that we chose is a, a Fender Squire Affinity Telecaster. It is a super common guitar and one that is on Craigslist frequently and you can pick them up for nothing. And it's a, it's a great guitar to, to toy around with. I think one of the neat things about taking something that, uh, especially if you're, if it's a cheaper guitar and you're trying to make it better is you're not going to make it worse in all in, in in all probability right, right. and you're going to learn so much from doing it i think that's the biggest thing is like people are typically afraid to uh 
uh, to, to put that foot forward and, and, you know, get their own tools out or figure out how to set up their own guitar or what happens if I take this apart. And the, that Telecaster is the perfect vehicle to, to learn how to do that on. Yeah. And the minute you start doing it, it becomes addictive and it's, it's a, it's, it's, it's a joy to do it and you're going to end up doing something and making better and being proud of it. So it's a great way to learn. If you haven't tinkered around with your own guitar for whatever reason, start. <laughs> and, <laughs> and if you have something that you really don't want to, like, you know, your, your grandpa gave you his, don't start on that. Don't start on that. <laughs> if your grandpa gave you anything, don't start on that. <laughs> no, no. Um, but if you happen to find yeah, a, a cheapo on Craigslist or on eBay or wherever. Yeah, exactly. Um, if you're I th- not, I, I, I think, I think if you have the bug, if you're curious and you, you don't want to do something on your own guitars, like go to Craigslist, go to a local music store that, that has those and, and, uh, and get something really cheap, no matter what it is, you can mess with it. <laughs> so anyways, oh, okay. So we've got a, a imaginary, Squire Affinity Telecaster, and you know that it's an Affinity because there's a little teeny tiny water uh, water decal up at the top, and it says Affinity, and it's like just a little teeny tiny. Let's see who wants to start, and you can't say pick guard, Tony. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the Jared, most you can't important say pick sound. <laughs> oh, I'm I'm. You're gonna like what I have to say. All right, then you start. You do. I, it. I shall. So I go to the garage sale and I pick one of these up. And no, it's already here. It's on the. It's imaginary on the table. We already went through that. I like you should listen scenarios. to the show. Ah. <laughs> so uh, I got the guitar. What am I going to do? The first thing I'm going to do is take the electronics out. Okay, take why? Take the strings off. Take the because I know I can do better than what's in there. Okay, so when you're talking about the electronics, let's be specific. The the wiring harness. Okay. So the volume knob, the tone knob, and the the wiring switcher. harness, the jack, anything that has to do with the circuitry. It's gone. That's the first thing I'm going to do. Okay. Um, I will put in, I'm going to look for a wire harness guy that's reasonable, and I'm going to buy his product. Um, and, 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 and where, not, where would you find Jared. that guy? And by the way, let me, let me back up. This is not Jared Brandon with Brandon Wild Pickups. So I'm, I'm a guy that doesn't do any of this stuff myself. I'm just... Just for funsies. You were going to charge me like a hundred bucks to do that. What are you doing? Of course I was. Um, But I I would find a guy that could. (laughs) Wow. No, I was. I was going to charge you You to do a wiring harness. Yeah, you were. What, 50 bucks? That's that's reasonable. Sure. I'd say 50 bucks is reasonable. Yeah, so. It's a lot of work. I would would find somebody to do that. Burn your fingers. (laughs) That's exactly. Yeah. Okay. Find somebody to do that. And I would make sure they're like CTS pots. Which are uh, you know middle of the road, pretty decent, good pot, um, just ceramic uh, uh, capacitors. Yeah, paper and oil. What's the? There's no difference. Oh. What's the difference? There's no difference. There's a big there. difference. No, there isn't. Yes, there is. Uh, <laughs> I'm older we, than you, and I've we have some meat busting to do. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So better capacitors. Yes. Paper and oil mustard caps from Mojo Tone. Okay. So let's talk about like, let's say you don't have a guy. All right. You have a guy. So, um, where, where would you go find a a good replacement harness? Jonesy blues, Jonesy blues, Jonesy blues out of Indiana. All right. Um, reverb has quite a few, uh, harness makers. So if you are into doing this or, or, you know, starting to go down this path, that's another good place. Mojo tone, Yep. Does some good ones. Um, I mean, there's a there's a whole bunch of them. Fantastic or you could company. just just get a book. Uh huh. Do it yourself. Do it yourself. And watch you buy the parts. Yeah, watch For sure. I mean, that's, that, I think you learn a lot more that way. I would agree with that. And but, the Telecaster is an e, is a really yeah, good way to start. Because there's only two pots. Yeah, that's the first one that I did. I went to Stu Mac, got uh, StuMac.com, and got my um, great company. Got the uh, all the parts and put it together myself. Speaking of Stu Mac, have you, did you guys get your new uh, catalog? I don't get the paper catalog. Oh, my God. They, they went all out. It's yeah. Like, yeah. It's glossy all the way through. Ryan Holy Adams moly. is on the front. Yeah, I, sh- I, sh- I have to change my address on the, for, for them. 
Yeah. So I can get so I can get one. <laughs> I didn't get mine yet. Did you get yours today? Yeah. Trying to get Dan week. Early wine on the show. Where yeah. is mine? Yeah. yeah. I've yeah. done I've done some work for Dan, so yeah. Maybe I can put in a good oh, word yeah. for you. Do that. I'll have my people call your people. I'd appreciate it. So uh <laughs> okay, so Jared, you've got how how much do you think that that would run you? From Jonesy Blues. Uh, well, I, that's the top. That's kind of tippy top of the line, right? He I mean, is, he's he's one of the better. He is very good at what he does. Actually, he he wouldn't just put any any old CTS pod in there. He actually goes through and and he um, he actually buys the premium pots from WD, I believe. So let's he, be if we got some new people out there. The CTS pot, a pot is a potentiometer, and that does it's it's a it variable the resistor. Va- it's a variable resistor. It changes the value. That's what that's what's hooked up under your underneath the, your tone and volume knob. That's it, correct. Okay, you will get the absolute best quality from Jonesy Blues. That's why I would go with him. Okay, um, in the price range, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm I'm not sure because I mean, frankly, I've always traded labor with him so interesting so, so if you bought the parts yourself switch two pots jack whatever you're probably looking at about 30 dollars worth of parts at least yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah yeah very well worth it yes and then uh your jack switchcraft yeah yeah yep. i mean you can't go wrong yeah this by the way oh. i I don't remember who sells them, uh, but you can get. I would also instead of doing that, you know, the jack that that the, the spring loaded jack that goes in that hole. I w- there's a new. Um, I think he just called you a jack hole. <laughs> <laughs> That's not very nice. Do you know what I'm talking about, Tony? The it's a new um, jack that fits right into the. Uh, the hole of the telly, and then you just... Oh, you mean like an electro socket? It's an electro socket jack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd throw one of them in there, too. Yeah, that's a nice that's a nice upgrade. They work a heck yeah. of a lot better. I've been using those lately. I like them a lot. Yep. So uh, The cool... One of the neat things is if, if uh, depending on where you are in the world, there's a, there's a maker for these from your own country in, in many instances. So we've got English makers, Canadian makers, you got uh, uh, South American makers, you got American makers. So these are, you know, local guys are doing this. So if you can, I would even say start there. So try to support yeah. your own, yeah. your own yeah. locality. Shop local. No support matter what. the scene. Yes. That's right. Uh, I will say also with the electronics, it is, that is your opportunity to try to uh, uh, do the, I guess, the, the Nashville swell so that you you switch the uh, the plate or you switch the volume mm. and the tone knob, oh, yeah. mm-hmm. so that you have your volume control more like on a Strat, yep. um, and it's it's easy access for you right there. I don't like that personally because I play pretty hard and I don't need my volume going all over the dang place. Right, but you can do that. You yeah, and one one other thing that doing your electronics yourself is that there is so many mods that you can do to the wiring. Oh, that it's, yeah. That, yeah, that's that's a really interesting thing. If you if you gonna tweak your your guitar, uh, wiring your electronics, you can you can do it like pff, a bunch of ways that, yeah. that will that will make your guitar sound really different. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. One one real good upgrade on tellies is in place of a three way switch is a four way switch, mm-hmm. and what you get is uh, in the front position you get bridge pickup, second position is bridge and neck in uh parallel yeah and, and then for a third position is neck pickup and then fourth position is both pickups in uh in series and it, yeah. it, you just have to hear it one time to know that that's a that is just a great basically turns it into a giant humbucker i need to try that yep four way yeah and it's it's really beefy it's a, it's really nice <laughs> oh, it sounds try. better when you say it Beefy. It's really beefy. <laughs> Making me hungry, man. It's beef is what's for dinner. <laughs> beef. Yeah. That's that's Meat. that's solid, Meat. man. Uh okay, so electronics. I think we're covered. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh wait, wait. Sorry. I did want to mention that in starting with your own electronics, uh, we're gonna I'm gonna make this a blog post and we'll kind of throw out some of the things that we've mentioned. 
um, including a really, really fantastic soldering iron that I got uh, that I that is super cheap and mega awesome. That's kind of where you have to start. If you've got a crap soldering iron, your life is going to be miserable. If it's a real good one or a good enough one <laughs> that doesn't break the bank, it's going to be so much easier for you. So we'll put that up there too. Carry on. Florian. Yes. Uh, painted sparkle. <laughs> no, that's a joke. Um, I would probably replace um, the tuners and the bridge if not doing the uh, the fret job too, because I think the the, the tuners uh, on those guitars really suck. Like, like big time. No, it's true. I, yeah, yeah. You can't uh, have an out of tune guitar. Yeah, for sure, it, it can't. It can't stay. It can't stay in tune and. It's uh, I, I, every time I, I I touch a guitar like that, I'm like ah oh, those tuners. It's wow. you you just <laughs> touch them and it's uh, and it's moving like uh, like crazy. You can you know it's it's not it's not gonna hold up uh, a long time. So right. I would I would go hardware and switch the the the, the tuners, tuners and, the, and, the and the bridge. Yeah. yeah, I think that whole chain, the nut as well. That's yeah, yeah, that's fair. I'd say, let's throw in the nut there too. Yeah, if it's not cut properly, sometimes they do they do a decent job on the on the nut, mm-hmm. um, but usually it's way too high. But yeah, you could you could just recut it uh, to have a better action uh, at the first fret. Yeah, or you could you could so so let's this is sort of the tuning train. You know, I'm using an automotive <laughs> reference, not that kind of train, but like a drive train. I mean, it is your drive train. So you got your bridge, what we'd call a hardtail bridge on a Telecaster. Non-tremolo. Yeah, yeah non-trem, yeah. non-trem yeah. bridge. Now, the Affinity, I believe, comes with the modern style. So it's, it's six individual saddles. There are Which, a myriad of ways to upgrade that. How would you do an upgrade that doesn't break the bank? Six six independent saddles are not that bad because uh, for intonation, it's it's mm-hmm. usually pretty good. Yeah, but uh, it's usually the metal that he, that they use that is a bit. It's it should be like a crappy alloy of some sort. Yep, uh, I don't know what, but uh, I would I would stay with the three the six uh, independent saddle. Yeah, because it's easier, and um, I would go uh, with whatever the hardest uh, metal you can find for for that. Because uh, or sometimes I, the softest metal like brass. Yeah, ah, depends, I was just going to ask depends, Tony about that. <laughs> it depends on the sound you're going for. That's exactly right. So Tony, elaborate on that a little bit. Well, I mean, it's it's if you go back to the early days of a Telecaster, back to the fifties. They originally had a three saddle bridge, right? Which two strings of, per sat, two, two strings, two strings per, saddle. per saddle, correct? Yeah. And they uh, they were generally made out of brass, which is kind of counterintuitive because it there it is a high wear uh, location where the strings ride across at a, you know, at a steep break angle, and um, so the old saddles tend to get either indentations or you know, mm-hmm. wherever the strings sat. Uh, but it, it does have a very unique tone. Um, I've used on some of my Telecasters, I'll switch them out and I'll sometimes use like an aluminum on the on the EA and brass on the other uh, two saddles. Oh, interesting. And uh, there's a company called uh, uh, Glendale. Uh, Dale Clark runs it. And he's got just this, you know, mad professor's laboratory of, of, of various uh, combinations of, of different metals and things like that. Um, some people like titanium, some people, you know, there's just, just any number of different things. So that, uh, you know, changing those out now with, with a six saddle approach, of course, it's a little bit different, but, um, you, you definitely have a ton of options, even, uh, something like a synthetic, like graph tech makes a, uh, yeah, replacement yeah. saddles, mostly for uh, a tremolo system, but they do also make them for uh, for for tellies too. Hmm. Yeah, they do make for for strat and uh, and tellies. Yeah, and it's, it's a really it's a it's a it's a very tough, hard. I think it's a nylon, 
uh, material that actually uh, wears really well. Hmm. And some and of then it, it's it's auto lubricant, uh, so it will it will keep your string uh, not. Uh, adhering to the to the metal when you when you tune it will it will tune better and um, because when the strings move it it moves a bit in the, into the the groove of the saddle of the nut so if you have the the graph tech stuff it's it's yeah it's really nice you could keep your original uh, saddle plate and then yeah. for about forty five bucks well that's that's oh, another topic because the the bridge plate will would. Uh, some people would say that it will ch change the sound. Uh, I don't really agree with that. But it, if it was harder, it would transfer more energy to the body. But in in a Squire Affinity, uh, I mean, it's a, it's it's a steel plate. Some right. are steel, some are brass, some are pot metal. Well, no, are, yeah, the, it depends. It depends the on the affinity. usually it's, it's. And then when you get to steel, there's cold road cold road steel. Okay, <laughs> all right, professor. <laughs> So uh, my point is that if you you wouldn't have to disregard the entire bridge assembly. No, no, just, you, just you the could, saddle. You I could actually just get the saddles. Yeah, that'd be about forty five bucks, and you'd be good. You'd be in good shape. Yeah. Well, you have to you have to buy new tuners too. Well, let's get on to that. So the next thing yeah. in the, in that string is, uh, in the line, not the string in that line is the nut. Just really quickly, on an affinity, it's going to be a plastic nut. And it, plastic soft, and they're not going to spend a ton of time at at that price level of really nailing the the fit or the height. They leave them high. Yeah, I mean, they because leave them it's, it's easier to cut it down. With a well, if you go too low, then you then you, you got to start, start all over. So something that you could do. So let's talk about the nut real quick. Why would you, if you have a high nut, Florian? Why would you want to adjust it? Well, it depends on the on the playing of the player. Um, I personally shoot out for the lowest action I can go uh, because I'm not playing in the in the way uh, small hands, and I can't really play on high action guitars. Some like that. Some like that. Uh, for example, Jay Maskis plays like uh, it's it's really really high. I don't know. I don't know how how high it's at the 12th fret, but it's really high. I. I do prefer to have a low, low, low action. So, um, mm -hmm. but it really depends on the on the player. Uh, well, and if it's too low, that's when you're going to start getting fret buzz and all. Yeah, I mean from and in also most if, if if it's too high uh, and you're playing like clean stuff and uh, arpeggios and and stuff like that, it can be uh, it can get out of tune because uh, the distance the strings have to. Uh, have to make uh, to to go touch the fret. The oh yeah, that's a good note, point. The note will get sharp. So so let let's imagine let's let's kind of paint that picture. It's like if you have a string and you pull on it a little bit, um, and it's not going to distort the string as much. If you have to, if you pull that string really far down, now you're stretching the string farther than it would have been, thus taking it out of tune. Yeah. Yeah. Now yeah. that makes, so, that makes a lot or, of sense. Or you could scallop the fretboard like Yngwie. Right. And then oh, you get then you really, really, really have tune, problems. Yeah. 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 And then that's, oh. um, to me, that's a big problem. And that's some, the, the most common problem on the, on the cheap guitars. Uh, yeah. No, that's, because that's super the, fair. To me, the, a cheap guitar doesn't really sound bad. It's just that it plays bad and it, doesn't stay in tune. Mm -hmm. That's why usually people doesn't like them. Give me a guitar, a uh, Square Affinity, and uh, I will set it up and make it uh, make it stay in tune with good tuners for sure. Mm -hmm. um, and it will, it can, it can play good and sound good in a good amp. Mm -hmm. Like if you play, if you play a, a Square Affinity into a, a cheapo transistor uh, lower amp. It, it's gonna be hard for for you to get a good tone. Yeah. But um, if you, I, my, that's my theory. Um, a cheap guitar into a good amp will sound good. A uh, good guitar into a cheap amp, nah, not so sure. Yeah. No, I'd agree with. I mean, hundred yeah. percent. You're gonna get nobody arguing with that. There's loads and loads of videos on YouTube in which uh, that can show you how to take, you know, remove the nut from your guitar. 
and you're not going to break, you're not going to kill it. Don't worry. You can, you can safely remove the nut from your guitar if you're following the right process. There's plenty of ways to mess that up. But once you do it, once you get that nut off, my point when you said you're not going to kill it, when I said you're not going to kill it is there are many ways to get that on, um, many, if you can't do it yourself, somebody can get it back on. <laughs> point is, well, you shouldn't have to remove the nut. Well, you, well, if it's too high, if it's, if, it, if, if, if the, if you can cut into the nut, the, into the slots, yes, leave the nut alone. If you can't. For whatever reason, if you buy lighter fluid and matches, lighter fluid and matches, <laughs> that's a way. So yeah, you can you can file that down a little bit. Yes, you can. Um, uh, and and if not, if for whatever reason, or if you're putting your own nut on, let's take let's talk about that. Because you could upgrade, right? So you can get plastic to bone. To bo- bone is what most people regard as the tippy top of the line as far as maintaining getting the best tone out of the guitar. Some people like zero frets. Some people like zero frets too. (sighs) (laughs) Um, That's a whole other. (laughs) We'll save that for another (laughs) another episode. But I think uh, Tusk makes a, uh, makes a really good replacement for that. People who really like bone hate the idea of using Tusk T U S Q. Uh, that was the first one that I did for my first nut replacement. Um, that sounds terrible. Um, <laughs> and anyway, and that's and it's a really is a good way to go. And you can get a new nut from uh, a new tusk material nut for like twelve bucks. I use black tusk on the on my guitars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good stuff. So uh, one thing I would I, I'm not a fan of having someone who's not a good guitar technician mess with nuts Mm -hmm. Uh, only because there's a lot of things that can go wrong Mm -hmm. and even seasoned professional repair people screw nuts you know we call it blowing a nut yeah when you go too far with a file sure and you start over yep um but for 12 bucks it's worth a shot but if you're going to get one um i would suggest finding one that is uh, pre-slotted pre-slotted yes uh, so that, you know, they don't go all the way, but at least you've got a good starting point. Yeah. And then the bare minimum you're going to have to do there is maybe do a little bit of flat sanding on the bottom. If it's yeah. too high, yeah, if it's too high and, and, and potentially off the side. So it's not just like hanging out there by its side. Right. It's an easy, uh, dollar barrier entry into doing, into like really getting in there and, and messing with your guitar. And if they do it wrong, eh, get somebody to do it the right way. Yeah. Yeah. Just don't cause irreparable damage. Right. And they're actually easy, relatively easy to get off, which is great and and easy to put back on. I've found. <laughs> oh, there's so many jokes with that. So, um, <clears throat> so now we're on to tuners. Tuner talk. All right. So, Florian, tuners. I would go with either hip shots or sparzol. Locking tuners. Oh, locking tuners. Well, you can you can go vintage vintage style uh, Fender uh, clues and tuners, but um, which are fine. But to me, if you already have a problem tuning and uh, staying in tune, um, locking tuners will for sure help the problem. Yeah. Uh, I use that on all my guitars. Uh, and it's quick change yeah. for a live show too. I still um, ha- I still haven't put them on. Actually, I took some off of my one of the one of the guitars I bought because I, oh, yeah? I was just frustrated. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's, that whole turning the 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 whole the one little knob on the back. It just me up. Yeah, couldn't I handle know. that. I know. I know. It was just it was weird. It was alien. I was like, ah, get it off. <laughs> Um, well, it depends. It depends on the on the type of locking tuners. Uh, yes. The the, the spurzel and the the hip shots just have a, a thumb wheel on the on the back, and it's just to just like hold a. There's a pin inside the tuner mm-hmm. that will push on the string and um, keep it from moving. Yeah. So. And what's what's nice about that is if you're in a live situation, you don't have to do. It's not a multi wind kind of thing. So you basically just string it right through the tuner and tighten it up from there. So you don't have to. It yeah, cuts the you, time down drastically if if you need to in a jam. You can you can you you can do that. 
uh, I recommend to always have uh, a few wines on the post, even if it's uh, locking tuners, because um, the more wines on the post you're gonna have, the lower you're gonna go on your tuner, and the more breaking all you're gonna have after the nut. That will uh, do uh, will put more pressure on the nut and better uh, stability and uh, and sound. Okay, so, man, I'm gonna go with that. <laughs> I don't. I'm not. I'm not well versed in the locking tuner world, Jared. I have a couple of guitars with locking tuners. Yeah, and uh, I think they're great. And as a matter of fact, my Stratocaster uh, came with them. My mm-hmm. Stratocaster Plus, great tuners, man. Yeah, and that's a that's a pretty cheap upgrade too. I mean, uh, all, all things considered, the spur, the spurs are are seventy five bucks, I think. I mean, so yeah, or you just get some like you know Grover tuners. Yeah. Because you know <laughs> this is a really cheap guitar, so anything I mean, better than what's on there. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. For the sure. stamp steals. I mean, I, I, I'm, a, I'm personally, I'm a fan of the clues on vintage style. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's good stuff. But, but there are also some really good replacements. I, I, that are, that are what I would call low mass, and to me that makes a difference. Uh, one of the, you know, being a, a product of the music scene from the '70s and '80s when everything was brass nut. Brass bridge, high mass tuners, yeah, <laughs> uh, all things that I, Why was I think that? killed. I, I don't know. They thought it would sustain more, which it, I don't think it's that it ever did. It's the hair day, the yeah. hair band day. So you know, I, I've I've since most of my my builds, I'll use a Cluzon style, or how do you spell uh, that for everybody? K L U S O N. K L U S O N. Cluzon tuners sound really great. They're good tuners. Great tuners. Well, they're adequate. I mean, it's still a stamp. <laughs> they're a stamp well, steel. Well, they're adequate, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, I mean, it's, it's just kind of I the nature of the beast. Good. If by awesome you mean adequate, then yes. <laughs> yes, if by awesome. Yeah. <laughs> All right. I got a, I got a set of vintage style Cluzons on my 1962 SG Les Paul. Yeah. That's what I think of them. It, you know, it's a stamped steel tuning machine. Yeah. It's, it, it was a, an economy move back in the 1920s and 30s, and you know it, it, there's still an economy tuner. But if you get a good set that has, you know, the the post stays in place, mm-hmm. they'll they'll hold tune just fine. Yeah. Um, but a low mass sealed tuner is, you know, uh, I think it, uh, is it Schaller that makes a they make some kind of makes some pretty cool yeah, tuners. Grover does that. Yeah, yeah. Grover, Grover may have some uh, low mass. Yeah. And and you can get into a set of those for like 40, 40 bucks, Grover tuners. Well, yeah, entry level Grovers. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we're in an entry level guitar, yeah, so exactly. it's all right. All right. So that is, that's a lot of stuff. And this guitar is on its way. You covered it. Well, no, we didn't cover it. The only I thing get to we, do something. Well, I didn't do anything. <laughs> Well, okay, so the, the first the thing that... Wait, you didn't do anything? No, I've been just chit chatting. <clears throat> I mean, you didn't do anything? I didn't do anything. Well, do it then. Uh, I think you need one of my tone-improving pick guards. <laughs> 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 but no, that's, that's not true. No, actually, I think everything we've covered so far is... I mean, that's that's what... I mean, if I would have... Oh, there's two more majors. So pickups. Okay, well, that's, yeah, I mean, with a Telecaster, you're, you are kind of... Um, at least in the bridge position, pretty well married to a, a standard Telecaster bridge pickup. Or stacked. Or? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Stacked or a... Well... You can get a, like a, a, a... Noiseless. A single style humbucker, which would be a stacked one. Yeah, yeah. like, yeah, stacked or yeah. A, a, a dual coil. Yep. You, you yeah. And you could do that. Um, or a blade. A blade, if you will. That's the dual coil, pretty much. Yeah. And, and that, what I'm saying is you're pretty much married to that standard. It's basically right. that shape. That yes. shape. Yes. Three screws. It's the shape. Fits into the bridge. But there's a huge range of tone that you can get oh, yeah. in be, with those pickups. I mean, yeah. th- there, there's a world of yeah. uh, possibilities. I mean, any, anything from, you know, stock to a little bit hotter to quarter pound magnets to... Yep. Uh, I had a quarter pounders uh, in, in, in one of mine. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and hey, I, I had like to take them out. It just, what it was do they like, call quarter pounders up in Canada? Royals? Oh, man. Florian, Royale we gave cheese. that one on a, on right. a, on a silver <laughs> platter. <laughs> <laughs> what, do they call, what do they call quarter pounders up in Canada? But you want any French? 
No, I mean, when you walk into a McDonald's in Canada, do you say, I'd like a quarter pounder? Yeah. Even though you're on the metric system? Yeah. I thought it was Royale with cheese. No. Oh, no, that's in France. Ah. Uh, yeah. They, they're not fully French. No, that's, uh, in Canada, we, we have the, the metric system, but not on everything. Ah, uh-huh. okay. Yeah. Well, that's got to be confusing. You, when you buy, when you buy uh, wood or... Uh, pff, I don't know. Uh, in the construction business, it's all it's all uh, imperial. Right. Oh, that's right. Oh, so cubits. <laughs> and, and you use uh, <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> cubits. <laughs> going, all, going all biblical. Yeah. On this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, anyways, back to the guitars. So, what pickups. pickups? What pickups would you put in if it was your project? All right. Well, I mean, I would stick obviously the bridge. We're not pickup. trying to break the bank here. Yeah. I think the. I, I like the sound of the Tele neck pickup as mm-hmm. it sits. I do too. Except if you want a humbucking style pickup, something that's quieter. Um, I am a, a big fan of Filtertron style. Um, oh, yeah. Good they idea. are. It's a low output uh, humbucking pickup. Uh, you can get Gretsch style. TV Jones makes some. I'm sure there's, you know, everybody's winding them in these days now, it seems, because yeah. the parts are now available. But that's a great in a in a in a telly. I, I think that sounds really good. Um, a lot of people put full size humbuckers in or mini humbuckers, and those sound pretty good too. But uh, for my money, I'll I'll go with a Filtatron in the neck, assuming uh, yeah. you don't have to do too much. Now, luckily, many yeah. of the Fender models are routed already. The body is routed so that you uh, you can fit one in there, and then you have to modify the pick guard. Or mm. buy one from so me. you're talking about actually putting like a humbucker size yeah pickup in there or a, or a filtertron size yeah we, well yeah, okay but, but so we're just so we're clear we're we're we are we are you now, have moved away we've 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 broken out so, so okay so that's interesting now what would you do with the with the bridge again I don't mind the sound of a bridge it's it's a lot of times they're a little too bright for my taste. Mm-hmm. But I'm not a big fan of the split rails or you know the the dual coil. Those are super bright. Yeah, they they just they're Bruce just Bruce Springsteen had a telly with those rails in them, and yeah. I think I don't want to. Not I think Bill you're Lawrence. kind of a rail guy, or you're not. Yeah, it, and he had a Marshall amp, and it was the ear. It was so ear piercing. Yeah, yeah. Wow. I mean, some people love like the Bardens that. Uh, that are, that were in some yeah. some tellies. Sorry, like Bruce. By the way, yeah, I do like. Oh, music. You, you can you can get a different bridge play that will accept uh, usual uh, humbuckers or. Well, that yeah, that's true. Yeah, you could do yeah. that if you wanted to put a humbucker into the bridge. Oh, position. that is sacrilege! What are you guys talking about? Yeah, just. Oh, just, you can do it. It's <laughs> just get the router out. <laughs> okay, so let's 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 imagine that we're not going to do that. And we're going to stay with a single. Yeah, to the single bridge. I, I would go I, if I had to s- stick with a, a single bridge. Yep. I would go with a lower output, um, maybe wound with what is it like heavier gauge? To get you more mid tones. Yeah, forty two. Yeah, and it, uh, I've always common. had 40, I mean, 42, 43, whatever it takes. Uh, forty two, buddy. Forty two. <laughs> is that a waist size or what? <laughs> that was a, Mr. Mom joke. Oh boy. Yeah. Uh, okay. Anyways. Okay. So, so I, I, yeah, we're I, just I, we're just trying to take yeah. the, the the Telecaster in its Telecaster nest yeah. and say let's make it a little bit better. You, you have a gazillion choices. There are a to. gazillion choices, and you can quote me on that. I did. Thank you. And also, if you go humbucker, you can. That's when, uh, like. Uh, you can go berserk on the wiring harness. Right. Because you can just... Oh, yeah. Even more than just a four switch, you can go five switch. Then you get a super switch and go berserk, oh, you can, too. Oh, you can put push pulls on the... Oh, yeah. Holy moly. Because you got all these... Yeah. You got, you know, four different coils with two humbuckers on a telly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, well, at that point... Sky's I mean, the limit. Just get yourself a... <laughs> just get yourself a modified and call it a day. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Okay, so uh, so my choice mm-hmm. would be a stock Tele bridge, stock Tele maybe bridge, maybe slightly underwound, and a Filtertron in the neck. Okay, nice. Uh, and the good thing is that there are gobs and gobs of options out there, oh, yeah. and that you can do that for cheap. And I don't mean cheap 
as in cheap product. I mean, you know, yeah, you can do cheap, that. Good money. Yeah. Yeah. You don't, you don't have to spend a ton of money to, to get better sound. My thing is going to be some, some, some guard. <laughs> strap, <laughs> is, strap locks, <laughs> uh, some, some, some fret work. Yeah. 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 So one of the first tools that I bought when I started working on my guitars was from Stu Mac. I'm not trying to plug Stu Mac, but that's just where I got it. But it's the, it's the file that basically takes the edges off of the frets. Nice. On the, the, the mark almost, I would say almost the universal mark of a, of a cheap guitar is that if you run your fingers, your thumb and your forefinger down... The, the 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 length of the neck, it's gonna go tick 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 tick. Right. It's gonna like a L- cheese grater. The nubs. <laughs> L- luthier tips. If you have a well, if you have access to a table so and you have a file, you can make that. Yes, tool. that's true. Oh yeah, that's true. Yeah, uh, I never I never bought one and uh, I just uh, put an angle on my table so and. Uh, fit the the file into a block of wood and ta-da yep and there's loads of videos actually that that show you how to do that on youtube oh as yeah, well. yeah, yeah i yeah. considered doing that and then i said ah i just hey look at this one <laughs> <laughs> um, and it was christmas time so i asked for that and so yeah. what it is is essentially it's a it's a file that has been um fit into a block of wood and that block of wood glides along the top of your frets and essentially uh, gives you a nice smooth edge down your fret. So when you're when you're done with that, it should be like absolute butter. You sh- you sh- you sh- really shouldn't feel hardly anything at all. Now, if you just leave it, because I see Tony's eyeballs going like, "Well, son, tell you if I, <laughs> what the next thing you have to do is." You can see me. You can't see me yet. <laughs> <laughs> After you do that, that's not enough. You do have to go in, and and this is where sort of you, I developed the love of working on my own guitars. Truth, because I I made a a radical change immediately with that tool, and I instantly saw, hey, I can do this. And the next thing I did was I realized, well, now I've got slightly sharp edges, although the nubs are gone and it's smooth. And so now you go in and you, and you very, it's, it's a time taking process, but you, you use some different, uh, uh, different grits of sandpaper or different, uh, file, um, gauges, is that, or files, gauge, sized teeth, tooth, anyways, different kinds of files. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, I mean there are, there are fret files. That, there are fret files, and that will cost you more than the guitar. Um, yeah. But yeah. <laughs> so if you don't have that, and you just have some, uh, you can you can mask off your uh, your fingerboard, and so you don't destroy the wood. And you just you go in with with each fret on each side of, of other fret. So fret your fret's going to have four corners, and you just take a little bit of love and and smooth off each of those four cornered areas some people like them really round mm-hmm. some people like them on a on a very uh, just you know on, on an angle uh so just whatever your preference is if you take the time to do that and don't rush it and uh and 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 just apply just just that process you're the playability of your guitar will so radically improve, not necessarily make you sound better, but it's you're you're not going to ha- hate putting your hands all over this board. You get rid of the cheapness right away. Uh, you really do. And you just spent a whole bunch of quality time with your new favorite thing. And it's very zenning. It's wait, zenning's not a word. It's very zen like. You know? Just zen. Yeah. This is just very zen. That too. Yeah. Um, so anyways, that are, uh, those are a handful of ways to take a really cheap guitar. Now, if you did every single one of those things that we did, man, you'd have a banging little guitar. And you'd then have of an course, expensive guitar. <laughs> well, it's not, I mean, no, let's say, I mean, you're in, you're in, you're into it for what? Another, 
150 bucks. Yeah, I think for about for under $200. Right. But so but the but the different point is that at this point now you have become very familiar with your guitar. You've probably learned a whole bunch. You've probably learned a whole bunch for another reason because you're likely have gone to YouTube to look at the way to do this and you're not going to do it from one video. So you're going to get a whole bunch of different people's points of view on how to do things. And I think that's a really, really valuable experience. That's worth that, that money to, to have a good understanding of what your guitar can do, how you like to have it, and just a deep dive into the guitar world to set you up for your next guitar. And then go get a, a really nice pick guard from the pick guard. <laughs> yeah. What fun would it be to spend $1,800 on a nice new guitar and then not have to do anything to it? I don't, I, I, I don't think I'd would be, I don't want to do that. <laughs> no. I mean, that's, that's why I can't go out and buy a U.S. Strat or a Tele. No. Yeah. Uh, I, I you mean, want to personalize First of all, it. I know I can build it for a heck of a lot less than what sure, a U.S. Sure. model costs. Secondly, I get to choose the componentry yeah. and the wood and the finish. And that's half, yeah. that's half now, the fun. Now, I'm not degrading those nicer guitars by saying that. I'm just saying. Yeah. You know, if you can't... For me, if I can't put my own spin on it, eh, yeah, it's not fun. Or in the case of like Florian, where you have somebody who is making something that that has a very signature things that is willing to work with you to 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 you know tailored to a few of your spe- specifications without you know drifting too far off from that luthier's style. Yeah, I mean that's equally an exciting sure thing yeah. to do too. So having your own stuff built. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Woo, that was a lot of fun. All right. So now we're going to wrap this mother up with the Would You Rather. (laughs) That's his his thing. That's nice. (laughs) It's going to change every podcast. Is that available on iTunes? Well, it isn't because you did the last one like that. So now you got to do a different one. What would how would a woolly mammoth say? Would you? Rather? <laughs> <laughs> would you rather? Okay, we'll do that one. All right. So what's the, what the what's the question, Jared? I don't remember the would you rather. It's what we were gonna do? Three, three, five. Would you rather have a, a Gibson <laughs> three thirty five? Vintage. A vintage one. Uh-huh. Three forty five. Or three fifty five. No, three forty five. <laughs> One of those. No, three forty five. <laughs> or would you rather have a white falcon? Right? Did I say that right? Yes, <laughs> you did. Okay, let's try this again. Uh, okay, do your woolly. So it's. Hang on. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now you hey, can't. You no, can't get rid on. of it now. It's a, it's a vintage Gretsch white falcon. Or a vintage Gibson 345. All right, all right. Single cut or double cut? Double. On the Falcon? No. No, I didn't know they make a double cut Falcon. Yeah. Vintage, really? Yeah. Oh. A vintage Gretsch. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Do we need to write it out for you? Yes. Oh, my goodness. A vintage Gretsch white Falcon. Falcon. Vintage Gretsch white Felton. Falcon. Falcon. Like the a bird. felt tip. <laughs> Just just write it on the TV screen. <laughs> what's what's the color of the of the Gibson? Oh, that's, oh, that's a, good a good question. question. Whoa! Uh, yeah, because it depends. Padito. So um, that's the beauty right there. Sunburst? Because they're kind of rare. Wait, it, are you Wait, asking what, what, what kind? What kind? What kind of sunburst? Oh, I think you got. Uh, I can't. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> A sunburst. Isn't there just one kind? Of, a three? A three well, color a 345? sunburst? Yeah. Well, they make yeah, them in a lot well, of different you colors. Can, you can have three-tone or... Three-tone solid sunburst. black. You can have cherry. A two, two-tone sunburst? No, I don't think I've ever seen Three-tone tone sunburst. Yeah. Well, well Gibson, Gibson, Gibson doesn't really use My 1969 was a Gibson Dove. You've seen that. Yeah. That's, yeah. A, that's a very rare guitar, by the way. Hmm. I've never. I've, Ace Frehley's the only other person I've seen have one of those. Really? Yeah. A Gibson Dove, uh, and it's a 1969 too. Mm-hmm. Okay. Dove. Vintage white. I know. I'm. I'm an idiot. <laughs> Sometimes. All right. Okay. 
So or wait, a, clap you back Mikey's in. Late, 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 late slice. Clap you back in. No, don't get him off focus. <laughs> All right. Do you want me to read? <laughs> All right. Would you rather? Would you rather have a Gretsch White Falcon, a vintage one, one of the originals, or would you rather have a Gibson ES three forty five in walnut finish? Yes. Walnut. Okay, Tony. Yeah, the, the walnut thing. Come on, <laughs> you go for the walnut. No, <laughs> give me a fel- white falcon any day of the week. There All you right. go. Uh, Sylvain Sylvain from the New York Dolls played one. Yep, you can't beat that. Billy Duffy. Yeah, that's right, Billy Duffy. That's right. He's, yep. So yeah, white falcon all the way. Top of the line, Gretsch. Jared. Yeah, yeah. Give me the Gibson. Oh yeah. Yep. Give me the Gibson. He can always refinish it. Sparkle exactly. orange. <laughs> yep. Can always sandblast some sparkles in that thing. <laughs> Just embed it into the wood. Oh my god. I mean walnut finish. Ugh. But I'd take the Gibson because I don't know. I think that walnut is a slamming looking guitar, man. Oh yeah. I think it's cool. Mm. It reminds me of dog poo or UPS brown <laughs> or UPS truck yeah but it's it's I don't know man are you kidding me with some gold some people really honestly do like walnut color yeah. I mean dude with, yeah. you got you got gold hardware you got the veritone a friend of mine his dad bought a brand new ES335 in walnut and it's early 70s yeah and it actually does look pretty good I think it it's, looks it's killer. a darker yeah. walnut it does look good yeah on the guitar I, I used to, to jam in a in a in a space that had uh, one of the guitars was a ES339 hmm. uh, mm-hmm. in walnut also and it was ah, yeah it was beautiful it was beautiful nice. yeah I think it's just I think it's pretty stunning yeah. I, it, it looks it just look, it just looks simple and I don't know it, it looks a heck of a lot better on an an ES model than it does like a early seventies SG, definitely e- or an EBO. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I kind of uh, like the one that's on the uh, on, the, on the SG and an EBO. I just don't like the. I'm not a cherry. I don't like the cherry. Oh no, I hate that color. On, I know that's like the color of every Jared's steaming <laughs> right now because he's got like for, six SGs. For, for future for because future nuts. clients of millimetric instruments, yes, never ever ask me to do a cherry finish. I would never. like to special order. <laughs> I'd like to special order one with a cherry finish. You please. need to, yeah. nope. you need <laughs> to do either your orange one in the in the orange sparkle. <laughs> <laughs> orange sparkle on the back. That's yeah. right. My friend Thomas is always asking me, "Wait, when we when you when you gonna do a sparkle finish?" I'm like, "Eh." <laughs> eh, that's French well, for I, I, I never. Like, I, like, I, like, I like sparkles on the on vintage Gretsches and the, yeah. and all the guitars. But yeah, I yep. don't think it's quite fitting on the on my guitar. Throw some sparkle on that white Falcon. Not too much. Just no, a little my bit. gosh, oh, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Sacrilege. It already has sparkle sparkles binding. in the binding. Metallic yes. white. Okay, so here's what I'm doing. Because since everybody cares so much about me, well, of course I do. I'm waiting um, for this. I look. I love the ES345. It is one of my all-time favorite guitars. I, I really do love that. I like it too. But mm. remember our last podcast, Billy Duffy, White Falcon? Right. I got to go with that. Okay. Because I've, I've never had one, and I got to do that one. That's fair enough. Yeah. I'd, I'd take off all of, all the stuff, but no. <laughs> no, I think that'd be really cool. I no doubt, especially there's. I think there's a difference because when you look at uh, newer models of that, it's like white, like super white. But with that, an old one is going to have that aged Yellowy. white too. It'll look great. Okay. What? Nothing. <laughs> Secrets are lies. Why did you ask? Yes, we're gonna ask Florian. Yeah, let's ask him. <laughs> Florian. <laughs> would you uh, rather? <laughs> yeah, ES three forty-five. The walnut. If you had your choice between yeah, that, the walnut one. It's an ES three forty-five or an ES three fifty-five. <laughs> so we have a tie. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the way it works. So why, why, Florian? Uh, well, he can. As much I like, I like the white falcon, but it's. 
as uh, Steve Albini say in uh, in, a, in a video on YouTube on uh, when he when he's recording a, a, ja a Japanese band uh, and it, one of the, the guitarists is showing him a, a flying V with gold hardware and he said that's too much guitar in one guitar. <laughs> so I like the wild fa the white falcon, but to me it's way too much guitar in one guitar. Okay, I, I'm, that's an interesting. That's way I would yeah. 100 percent. 1,000% agree with that. I don't think I would buy one of those, like, outright. There's too many other guitars that I like. But if I had to choose between these two, for sentimental reasons, I would pick the White Falcon. Good. Okay, dudes. That was awesome. great. Great podcast. Hey, we should do this again sometime. Yes. Right. And for everybody else out there, subscribe! Yeah. Yeah. Tony, you going to say yeah, too? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dudes. Did I say that right? <laughs> <laughs> Give me this thing. Well, that's it for these knobs. Please visit us at our website at theguitarknobs.com for episodes, news, and guest profiles. You can get all social with us on our Facebook group, at facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash guitar knobs. Give us a tweet at guitar underscore knobs. And check out our gallery on Instagram at guitar knobs.